right hi guys it's ayana again um and this is episode three of the self-esteem mini series this is going to focus on the tools i've used um to kind of start my journey in building self-esteem and understanding who i am so i'm a bit further away from the camera had some good advice from one of my best friends, Kat. She was like, you're too close to the camera. We want to see it all. And I was like, that's a really good point because I watched the first video and I was just a bit like, so basically. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> so I'm stepping back a little bit. I can't go back too far because I've got shorts on. But when I sit down, it really doesn't look like it. And I don't want like to be struck off of YouTube for nudity or something like that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about tools used today. Um, well, now I should say, because I'm filming them all over one day, as you've probably told, because my clothes haven't changed or maybe I just look this way every week or every few days. Um, so, yeah, tools used after kind of discovering where I was at. I have to be honest, I was a bit overwhelmed, um, mainly because of how I'd finished the last video, the talking about the confidence and self-esteem. It was a massive revelation for me and I was a bit like, whoa okay I don't know how to deal with this and I'm quite good at dealing with most situations there's not many things that are thrown at me that I don't have a solution for or that I don't have at least a calm head for to try and figure out a solution for and it's the first time something's kind of come up particularly to do with me that I was just like oh my gosh what do I do like I don't know I don't know what this looks like I've got no um examples what does good self-esteem look like you hear about it you read about it but you think well is that what they're really thinking is that what they're really feeling um and like i'd already said self-esteem is so different for everybody how can you put it in a bottle and say okay this is what self-esteem looks like you need to do this by that by, by this date by this time with this person and everything will be fixed but i think i found it overwhelming because i know that it's not as straightforward as that and it's not just as simple as ticking a few boxes and it's not also like once you've got it you've got it you know you can lose it it can wane it can change it can go in peaks and troughs it can change a lot depending on how you're feeling that day what you've been doing where you're at in your life um and that intimidated me i have to be honest that really intimidated me i thought my gosh well where do i even start once i get it how do i maintain it how do i know if i've got it how do i measure this like i'm a very logical person i'm a list person i'm a planned person so for me to not have a plan or a way of knowing that i've got something or i've done something i'm a bit like oh my gosh okay 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 so i mean the first place for me to kind of start with that with that was um counseling um and this is something I kind of discovered through going through my counselling, like I'd already spoke about in the previous episodes. Um, and that was a bit of a safe space for me to try and figure out how I'm going to start doing this. Um, and there's been a few tools that have kind of come up, which I'm going to speak about. But counselling was definitely the first one. And I think just having that safe space of speaking about your experiences and yourself and kind of recognising how they've impacted you is definitely a really good start a really really good start to figure out okay cool so I think like this because this is what I was told in school or when I was younger or my dad said this to me when I was younger and then it's not just about recognizing it it's then what do we do with that so for me a lot of I think my lack of self-esteem comes from a very negative narrative of myself in my own head and I had to think about where that had come from I think my negative narrative has come from a space where positive praise and love and compassion and compliment should have been. I think I am naturally someone that if you don't give me all of the information, I will make it up. If you give me a story with 50%, I'll make up the other 50% depending on what the first 50% was you gave me. So if, you know, um, your time, or I'm going to speak for me, if my time was predominantly negative I think I've filled that gap with a negative narrative and I've kind of perpetuated that and carried that on throughout adulthood now I can't sit here and say that it's all been bad because it hasn't it actually hasn't I think my negative narrative has made me very driven it's made me very ambitious it's made me very determined it's made me very committed um so I'm thankful for that like I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done my first degree. I wouldn't have had the jobs I've had. I wouldn't have saved the money I've saved. I wouldn't have done my master's. I wouldn't have done all of that stuff without that that negative narrative. So 
I'm not trying to completely discredit that and I'm, I'm trying to give it credit for how it has helped me. But what it has also done is taken away my ability to be proud of myself. It's taken away the ability to accept compliments. Um, it's taken away the ability to look at what I've got and say, you've done really well and stand still and know that, you know, you've achieved that. Like it's taken away my sense of achievement. Um, and I think sometimes it's actually taken away my appreciation and my gratitude because instead of me sitting thinking, do you know what? You're able to go on two, three holidays a year and not even bat an eyelid and think about the finances and how you're going to finance it. I'm just a bit like, well, yeah, you should be able to because, you know, you've worked hard and you should have more. You should have more to show for what you've done and you're a bit lazy. And did it. that's a narrative that it runs down instead of me sitting back thinking, no, I've done really well. And I think that's something that quite upset me because... I'd like to think of myself as an appreciative person and I'm appreciative of other people's work. Now, if someone had done even something less, I don't know how we measure that, but just for the sake of argument's sake, someone had done something less, I'd be bigging them up and be like, you've done amazing. Like, come on, what, you know, why are you not jumping from the rooftops? You've done so well, but I'm never able to recognise that in myself. So, you know, that voice is definitely something that I, I have a love-hate relationship with. Um, and I've actually kind of given that persona in my head a name. Her name is Patty. And whenever Patty comes up, I'm like, Patty, you're relevant, but not right now. Because sometimes Patty helps me. Like I said, Patty helps me a lot. But when I find that it's coming to curse me down or push me down, I say, Patty, you're relevant, but not right now. So if you do find that you have something similar, like a negative narrative, give it a name try and get some disassociation from it where you recognize its purpose and you're thankful for the things it's contributed but you turn away in love with the things that it doesn't help you with like no i'm not going to accept that anymore you're not going to make me feel less about myself and that was a very good starting point for me so that kind of started and with me kind of changing how i think that kind of started to help me build and started to make me realize as well which is quite scary how horrible i was to myself on a daily basis and I mean throughout the day all the time so that was quite difficult but Patty Patty's got her place I like that I'm gonna have a hashtag of that Patty's got her place but her place is not always here so after that what I started to do I'm still in counseling now so still utilizing that tool still working with Patty still um trying to change my thought process bearing in mind I only started doing this last year um and I'm 28, so we're talking 27 years of that habit. It's not going to be done overnight. And if you're as impatient as me, that's going to be frustrating to hear and frustrating to feel. It's not going to be done overnight. And I have to remind myself of that when I wake up and I'm not miraculously healed. I'm like, well, what the hell is going on? Like you said, talking to God, you know, I said I'd do this and I'd do that and I'd be good to go. So what go on? So, yeah, a little reminder. I say that out loud for myself as well. But other tools that I've used has been uh, Marissa Peer's book, I Am Enough. Um, and that hashtag is really important. That was one of the things that also helped me change my negative narrative. And Patty, Patty in my head, Patty that's got her place. I'm Enough, my sister Janine gave this to me and it's absolutely amazing book. I'm so glad she did. I've read it a few times. I mean, you can't see, but it's stiff. It's mashed up, like it's absolutely brilliant. So I definitely recommend glancing over that. There's exercises in there. There's things to say and do. And I really think it helps highlight how you think about yourself and try to unpick any bad habits and reoccurring patterns that you have within your life. That was one. Um, I also, I've not finished it yet, but it's still also been very helpful. A book called You Can Heal Your Life, recommended to me by a friend. I can't remember who the author is off the top of my head. It's on my Kindle, which is charging in my bedroom. But if anyone's interested in reading that, please message me and I'll get the details for you. I think that was quite good. And that speaks a lot. Kind of following up from what Marissa says in terms of breaking down that negative narrative, breaking down how you think and view yourself, taking the fear and the worry out of trying new things and setting new habits. That was really good. Um, Jenny, one of my favourite people in the world, got me this for Christmas as well, which is the Calm Journal by Fern Cotton. And... Um, I think this just kind of helped me more so with me being still and being calm. It's just little daily, daily entries that you do. Each day's got a date and it asks you just random things, literally random things to think about. So, for example, is there anything that's frustrating you in your life currently? Sometimes just admitting to yourself and putting pen to paper is the first step to making positive and calming changes. Um, and then we've got another one. 
Are you constantly trying to change yourself? What personal attributes do you think you should be more accepting of? So it's just little tiny thought provoking things, only a few lines each day. Some days I don't do it every day. In fact, I think there's probably about two weeks worth that I need catching up with. But on the days that I do sit down and journal, um, I do find it gives me a really sense, a real good sense of calm. I started journaling. Um, you can't really see this, but that's just my journal book. And that's through counselling. Um, and just writing down my thoughts and feelings, just a safe space to kind of think about what I'm feeling after each session, before each session, what I've got from it. And loads of different things that I kind of write in colour or I give myself tasks to look back and think about. What I would say is if you are journaling, please go back and read them. I didn't go back and read mine for a little while and I wasn't realising the progress I was making until I went back and started reading the first entries, you know. So please, 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 please go back and read them. I've got look there this is what I started about two months ago operation self-esteem I mean I'm really creative guys but illustration's not my strong point operation self-esteem um and I started talking about that and thinking about that in February that's the end of February um and loads of other little bits I've got there excuses are self-abuse again that handwriting's atrocious but it makes sense to me so, yeah, journaling has been a massive thing for me and that's really, really helped. But like I said, I really believe in going back and reading what you've written because you're not going to realise how far you're coming along in your journey until you do that. Um, meditation has been good. I've been getting into a lot more about chakras and understanding them and trying to unblock them and utilise them. And just 10 minutes. I mean, please don't feel, uh, what's the word? discouraged if you can't stick with it mentally because my first meditation was about six minutes and I was laying there and I was like calm 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 oh I need to do the washing I need to do it I want to come back calm 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 oh I wonder what so and so I want to come back and I mean literally I spent the whole meditation telling myself come back focus focus and that again is not something that changes overnight you really have to train yourself but the fact that you're committed to even a short time of trying to just tune in with yourself tune in with your body tune in with your mind tune in with your soul your spirit and figure out where you're feeling is a step in the right direction i'm now up to 20 minutes of maybe one and one or two wonders where i'm like oh nope i want to come back but other than that i stay with the meditation i follow it through and i'm just like oh it's really nice so i definitely recommend meditation and working out i'm not gonna lie to you i am not good at this one when i do it it's amazing and then i don't do it and i sit on the sofa and i'm just like well, you should be outside you should be outside or well, you should be outside <laughs> You should be outside. You should be outside. I don't get it. I don't know why why that happens because I know the benefits of working out. I felt it physically, mentally. That's definitely something I'm still working on and that kind of ties in more to my eating side and my weight side, which again is probably a whole new mini series by itself. But those are the things that I've been um, doing. Those are definitely the things I have been doing. Um, and I think that's kind of where I'll wrap it up for there. I'm looking forward to ex explaining to you guys the challenges and trying to stay committed. That's what I think I'll do the next episode on. Um, and also kind of the affirmations and praise, which kind of ties into this one. But I want to end on something positive. So I'm going to probably conclude on that one. Um, and yeah, that's it for number three. You may have noticed I started with coffee and I'm now on sangria. Um, the top line, bottom line is... If I'm going to do this, I have to be myself. I'm not going to sit here and sip espressos all day because that's rubbish. It's Saturday. It's an afternoon. If it was any other time, I would be having a drink. So I'm having a drink. I just hope the last episode is not. You can love yourself and you can do it. We've got this. That could be highly likely. Um, but let's hope it doesn't get there. Anyway, guys, thanks for your time. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think. All of that good stuff. Bye.